So today we're going to finish our last section on covalent bonding. And so we're going to talk about heteronuclear diatomic molecules and then put the localized electron model and the molecular orbital model together. Okay, so heteronuclear diatomic model molecules are where we have different atoms. And a special case of this is when we have atoms that are adjacent to each other in the periodic table. So like nitrogen and oxygen are things that are right next to each other. Because these elements are so similar, we can use the molecular orbital diagram for homonuclear diatomic molecules and count it for these specific type of heteronuclear diatomic molecules. And so let's take a look at an example, or a couple examples. So we want to use the molecular orbital model to predict the magnetism and bond order of the following molecules and ions. And so we have three of them. So let's do nitrogen monoxide first. Okay, nitrogen donates five valence electrons. Oxygen donates six, so that's 11 electrons total. Okay, you know what? If I get my molecular orbitals in order from lowest energy to highest energy, we're going to go sigma 2s antibonding 2s, and then we've got pi, and then we're going to go to 2p, sigma 2p, and then we've got the antibonding 2p and the sigma 2p antibonding. And so then let's draw in our orbitals. And we'll just use this same um, energy diagram for all three examples so that we don't have to draw it three times. So if we have 11 electrons, we're going to start at lowest energy. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Because remember, we fill one each before we double them up. 9, 10, 11. And so because we have one by itself, that means that this is paramagnetic. And if we look at bond order, that's the number of bonding electrons. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, minus the antibonding electrons. So that's 1, 2, 3. And then we divide it by 2. And so that gives us 5 over 2, which is 2.5. Two okay, now let's look at NO+. Plus. Okay, well, we've still got 5 electrons from nitrogen, 6 electrons from oxygen, but that 1 plus means that 1 electron is subtracted, and so this gives us 10 electrons. So if we go through again and draw in our orbitals, I'm just not going to write in the whole energy structure again. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now because we don't have a lone electron, they're all paired, this is diamagnetic. And if we wanted to do bond order, it's the number of bonded electrons. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, minus 1, 2, over 2, so that gives us 6 over 2, which gives us 3. Um, and so our bond order for NO plus is 3. So now if we look at our last compound, which is cyanide ion, so CN1 minus. Carbon donates 4 valence electrons. Nitrogen donates 5. And then this extra electron means we have to add one more, so this gives us 10 electrons total. And so what this means is because we have the same number of valence electrons, and these are all period 2 elements, our molecular orbital model will be the same. It will also be diamagnetic. And its bond order will also be 3. Ooh, that's supposed to be an E. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about heteronuclear diatomic molecules where the atoms are not adjacent. So when two atoms are very different, we can't use the energy level diagram for homonuclear molecules anymore. It won't work. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's look at hydrogen and fluorine put together. If we look at the valence electrons, we know that the valence electrons from hydrogen will come from the 1s, and we know that the valence electrons from fluorine are going to come from the 2p. And even though we've got five valence electrons from the 2p, we're going to just look at the ones that we would assume are going to bond with the hydrogen. And so if you take a look at the free atoms, so here's our free hydrogen, here's our free fluorine, and then this is the HF molecule. The 2p 
is at a lower energy. Okay, so we have low energy here, moving up to high energy. And the reason that the fluorine valence electrons are lower energy um, than the 1s is because fluorine binds its valence electrons much more tightly. Now, the hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid is considered a stable molecule because both electrons, both free electrons, the one from the hydrogen and the one from the fluorine, are lowered in energy compared to if they were free atoms by themselves. Okay, so here is our bonding orbital, and because we only have two electrons, they're both going to fill this, and so this gives us the lowest amount of energy versus the free atoms, and so we would say that this compound is stable. Okay, but again, it's the we don't have that energy um, level diagram that we would with homonuclear because our electrons are coming from different atoms, and so we have to look at the energy involved for the valence electrons from each of those atoms. Okay, so let's combine the localized electron model, or sorry, the localized, yeah, and the molecular orbital models. So the main issue with the localized electron model is when multiple Lewis structures can be drawn. Localized electron model says that electrons are localized, that they stay in a particular atom. And we know with resonance, or multiple bonds, that those electrons actually fluctuate in between different bonds. And so that goes against the localized electron model. And so resonance was kind of supposed to solve this problem for us. But this does not describe ions like O3 and NO3. And so both of those have, um, and we'll, I'll just draw real quickly here for you, both of those have a double bond um, that can't be described using that method. And so we can basically combine the two models to describe molecules that require resonance. So in resonance, we say that those double bonds kind of switch positions between, you know, for example, in the NO3-1 minus between the N and the different oxygens. All bonds require at least a sigma bond, and that sigma bond doesn't move. So that's why, you know, if we have all single bonds, we wouldn't really have resonance. It's the pi bond, or the what's used to create double and triple bonds, that moves. And so we can use the localized electron model to describe those sigma bonds, because they're not going to move anyway. And then we can use the molecular orbital model to describe pi bonds. So let's look at an example. Benzene is what's known as a ring structure. And so it's six carbon atoms and six hydrogens. And so we would assume that all six CGC bonds are considered equal, even though um, these are the two main structures that we can have. So you can see that the double bond rotates or alternates. And then here's our other resonance structure. And you can see that the double bond has now changed location. And so what we picture happening is that those electrons are just rotating in between. And so we would consider all those CDC bonds equal. And they're somewhere in between a double and a single bond. And so we would say that each carbon is then sp2 hybridized because it has three electron domains. And so the p orbitals are then going to form those pi bonds. And we usually write benzene like this with the circle in the middle to show that those double bonds are going to rotate between all the carbons. And it's a much easier way to draw than to have to draw these all the time. So when we talk about organic, anytime you have a point like this that represents a carbon, and then because organic compounds are composed of carbon and hydrogen, we assume that because we have one, two, and that you know our double is three, because we have three um, electrons being used or three bonds, um, that we would bond a hydrogen to complete carbon's octet. And so when we write organic compounds like this, we don't write in the hydrogens because we assume that you, know, you can do that and that you would know how to do that. And so um, this is what's called delocalized pi bonding because those uh, double bonds are kind of rotating all around. Okay, let's look at one more example. So the nitrate ion is also sp2 hybridized. You can see whoops, um, that we have three electron domains around the nitrogen, so that gives us sp2. Um, but then we've got this rotating double bond. We could put it here, or we could put it here. And so the leftover p orbitals are what form those pi bonds, or forms that double bond that rotates. Oops. And so um, you can see that's kind of what we're showing with this structure. Okay, we've got our delocalized pi bonds or p orbitals.